delivered us without. I shouldn't care if I offend you. I really shouldn't. Amen. You shouldn't care if, if I say what I say, as long as it helps you. Amen. 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 You know what? We 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 on a different Amen. place, time, whatever. Um, I just know that. I know I have learned, and I am forever learning, not so much as what God is saying to me, how he's saying it to me, Amen. what method he is using to communicate or to convey the message that he has for me at the moment, Amen. whether it be when I'm getting ready to minister or whether it be when I'm getting ready to go do something for him or for myself or for the people, whatever the case may be, I am begin to learn and, and I am ever learning what God or, or what means or method God uses to communicate something to me. Mm -hmm. Because it's okay to know what God said, mm -hmm. but when you not, don't understand how God communicates to you, a lot of what God has been trying to say to you, or has been saying to you, 98% of it probably has gotten lost in God trying to communicate to you. Mm. Okay. That's okay. So I have been constantly asking the Holy Spirit, teach me how you all talk to me. Show me you. Show me the Father. Show me the Son. You have free reign to show me this. I'm not going to allow what I've been taught, nor will I allow what I think I know, nor will I allow what I just learned to determine or dictate to me how you're going to speak about what means you're going to speak to me next. Amen. Yes, I can find some guidance in some of the past history of the things that you've taught me along the way and how, but I'm not going to be so stuck in my own self that you can't use a fish to convey a message to me mm -hmm. that you're wanting to help me through the fish. I'm going to allow myself to be open in such a way that God, no matter what you choose to use, no matter about what means you choose to speak to me, I'm going to open myself up in such a way that God, if you choose to use the donkey, Amen. I'm not going to keep hitting the donkey only because the donkey is bashing my leg up against the wall. Maybe, God, you're talking to me through the donkey. Amen. Come on, now. Amen. Amen. Come on. So with that being said, mm -hmm. and please, 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 don't, don't not get offended by this because all it's going to do to you is keep you stuck. And maybe, just maybe, God is using Every something that irks you or gets under your skin has been a message that he's trying to give you and say, look, you need to change here. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. Why does everything somebody say to you, whether it's about you or not? Okay. Yeah, they hurt my feelings, but, yeah. but why? Come on. Talk to me, though. So if they hurt your feelings, then what? Mm -hmm. Your day is bad? Mm -hmm. It's over now? You can't go forward and be successful or hear what God has you to do because one person hurt your feelings yeah. and you just spent 10 hours of your whole day rebuking and binding the devil. Well, maybe the Holy Spirit led you to that this morning. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. To see if you have finally come to a place to learn that, look, I'm going to keep bringing you back to this trough until you decide to drink of it. Maybe he's chosen to use those type of situations and circumstances to, to be his mouthpiece to you 
and I because we are forever learning but never ever coming to the knowledge of the truth. Amen. Just maybe. So I'm, 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 I'm going to just flow with him because he, he knows what he want to say to this house. Amen. And not only to this, this house, but to the people that's watching and the people that are in here because I'm going to tell you something. I know what, 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 what the Lord spoke to me and what with the conversation I had with him years ago. Amen. And I constantly, I constantly often revisit that conversation with him. Because I grew up as a little kid in church and I saw a, a lot. Stuff that, that amazed me. Yeah. Stuff that I laughed at. Mm -hmm. Stuff that I couldn't explain. Mm -hmm. Stuff that I could explain. Mm -hmm. Stuff that made me say, that, that, that's nobody but God. Amen. Stuff that made me say that that ain't God. Amen. So I've, I've seen a lot of stuff that, that, that does not dictate to me my outcome, mm -hmm. but at least I've allowed myself to be open to see, okay, you know what? All right, God, I see it all mm -hmm. because you allow me to see it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, God, I'm humble enough to allow you to utilize whatever you want to use in my life mm -hmm. to convey a message to me. Mm -hmm. Amen. One of the main things that um, I would talk to the Lord about often mm -hmm. coming up, mm -hmm. and especially when I, 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 I call this my deal-making moment with God. I did it once when I was um, 16. I got shocked. I told you guys about, about something. I'm not trying to um, talk about this. I'm just trying to get to a point for something. I, I, the first time I got shot, I was I found myself in my in my um, bedroom at home, and um, I, I had this dream that I was sitting at a table with, with, with God on one side, the devil on the other side. And I had to make a decision of who I was going to serve. Amen. And so I woke up and I said, God, you want me? And do something for me. <laughs> Satan get up. See y'all laughing. Uh -huh. I know that talk. Satan <laughs> gives me all the women I want, all the money I want. Mm -hmm. I said, and, and my daddy right here struggling, but I'm, I, I, I got a brand new one sitting out there. What you gonna do for me? At 16, this is what I'm talking. I'm waking up talking to God like this. Bless him, Lord. Laying in a cast. Bless him. Ain't paying, but look, I, I would rather go back out in the streets, make some real money, than to sit here and serve you like my like I saw my broke father do. And and take no no I'm, I'm having a real conversation here. As a 16-year-old kid, because like it or not, these are the conversations your children are having right now. Amen. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They may not be saying the exact same way I'm saying it, but maybe they are. Or the way I say it, but maybe they are. Yeah, they are. I, I, I know I had the conversation, and there's nothing to do under the sun. Yeah. So I was the only, I'm not the only person that had that conversation. Mm -hmm. Many of you today have that same conversation, but yet you think God don't know you have that conversation. Mm -hmm. So, here it comes. You know why your praise don't work? You know why your praise don't work? Tell me. Because you don't believe it works. Point blank simple. You praise the God, you praise the God, you praise the God, you praise the God, you praise the God. God. We're telling you that you praise God, this is going to happen, that happen, and you're going to do it for all your Christian life, and you're still in a miserable situation. But yet, you won't even allow yourself to, 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 to come to the knowledge of the truth. The only thing that has the power and the ability to set you free, truth. You won't even allow yourself to be truthful enough with yourself. So that when you do run the praise, the correct way, it'll have an effect that it's supposed to have. When you do pray according to knowledge, it'll have the effect it's supposed to have. When you do walk in patience 
according to knowledge. Yeah. It will then have the effect that patience is supposed to have in the walk of a believer. Yeah. When you love the correct way, yeah. and yet they still go and do what they want to go do, Opposite of what your love is portraying, that you say, you know, because guess what? Love, love suffers long. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that means if they slap you today, and four years later slap you again, and you told me you want me to love, when you're suffering, baby, talk to me. Mm -hmm. Oh, y'all don't like this. Yeah, come on. That's right. So I had a really nice conversation with us. I said, God, you know what? We got to get this thing for real. I, 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 for one, can't play with this. Because I'll leave you high and dry quick. Yep. I will. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yes, you we got to get this right. Mm -hmm. So he says, okay, we can do that. Go on back into the streets. <laughs> we're we're going to visit each other again. And we did. A few years down the road. But this time, he had allowed circumstances and situation to, to drag me to another wilderness. But this time, I succumbed quickly to the will of God and not my will. Because I understood something. That I'm in this situation because one, I put myself there. Secondly, God has allowed himself by his power to lead me and guide me to this place, although it is uncomfortable to me, but it's also a safety place for me. Because it's a place that he designed. And once I understood that, I stopped fighting against him. So I'm going to help you guys tonight. Um, and we're going to help ourselves in the process too. Amen. We ministered on Sunday. We were talking about... Um, Having a zeal of, of, of God in the book of Romans, the um, 10th chapter, verses 1 through 2, um, 3. Having a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Yeah. Let me show you what having a zeal of God looks like. Before we do that, let's, let's look up the word zeal. You ready? Mm -hmm. Zeal, write this down. Z-E-A-L. Somebody say zeal. Zeal. Z-E-A-L. -E zeal. Zeal. Okay. Great energy or enthusiasm. Great. Nothing wrong with zeal. Because this is what a lot of you are doing. And you think you're praising. You're showing forth off zeal. Mm -hmm. You're exhibiting great energy mm -hmm. and enthusiasm. That ain't praise. Okay. Oh, God, yeah. help me in this place. Yeah. Help me in this place. In pursuit of, of a cause or an object, or simply put, passion. Zeal. I'm going to read that definition again so y'all can get it. Yes. Y'all got it? Yes, yes. Zeal. Great energy or enthusiasm. In pursuit of a cause, or an object, or simply put, passion. You know how, okay, so you, you wrote that, you got that, right? Mm -hmm. let, me, let, me, let me, I was going to look up praise, but I'm going to tell you what the Holy Spirit just told me. Mm -hmm. To use as a definition. He says, praise me. And the first thing we do when he says praise him is, we zeal him with great enthusiasm and energy. Mm -hmm. And we lift up our hands and shout with a voice. But no, 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 if you're going to praise me, you're going to talk about what I've done. Okay. Oh, no. See, it just went over your head. No, no, see, it just went over your head. See, see, to praise someone means to constantly talk about their achievements. Yes. Amen. That's true. Amen. And the reason why you, 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 you are walking around with, with, with zeal, because you don't understand that praise me communicate about what they've done in your life or what they are doing in your life or what they're doing in your entire world. You're talking about their achievements. Yes. And you're not praising them because maybe he has not achieved nothing for you. Oh, you want to be taught tonight? We're going to be taught tonight. 
Because you want No, because why are you running like this? Hallelujah! Thank you, God. Ain't praise. <laughs> to praise him correctly. Wow, did y'all ever heard it? She always praising him. Talking about, she always praising that man. She always talking about what are he doing for her and what kind of car he got for her and what kind of house he got. And she, he always praising his wife about what, what she does for him. He never yeah, because that's how you praise somebody. Amen. Or something. Yeah. So in other words, give me something. In order for me to, uh, to, to, to begin to truly start praising God, <coughs> I have to now begin to look at mm -hmm. things that I can praise and love. Right. And, if, and if I be true for myself, I'll tell you what I had to do. Okay. I said, God, you know what? You ain't got me a car. Mm -hmm. Never did that one. No, 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 I'll tell you what I had to do because I realized that when I went to prison, I lost my life and I had lost it for seven years. But see, because I started building a relationship with the Holy Spirit, he began to show me what he was doing in my life. Mm -hmm. He said, where you were spending 20 years, you played guilty to 10 mm -hmm. and end up doing 14 months. That's where that's praise where you're right there. So now I, I, I truly have a testimony. Yeah. I truly have a praise report. Yeah. When I first my praise, I was facing 20. God. He always comes through. He always keeps me. He always cuts it off for me. Yes. He always gives me grace yes. and mercy. Yes. Why? Because I only did 14 months. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise. Praise the Lord. Amen. We'll help you tonight. Yes, we'll help you tonight. Amen. Yes. You're sitting here mm -hmm. in all this enthusiasm, oh. all this great energy. And ain't nothing wrong with the, the energy. And the enthusiasm mm -hmm. or the passion, mm -hmm. but know why you're doing it. Amen. The Bible says they have a zeal for God, of God, mm -hmm. but not according to knowledge. So you're just walking around here just making yourself look like a whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, because I'm a folk looking like this folk that crazy, and rightfully so. And so as soon as you get into something or get up against something, the first thing you do is go. Because yeah. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you don't have a report of praise that says he's done this for you before or he did for somebody else to know. So you don't know how to cope with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's go to scripture. Yes. Go to Matthew 17, 25 and 27. Seventeen and twenty-five, possible. Seventeen, twenty-five, and twenty-seven. Matthew. I'm gonna tell it to you. We're gonna read the story very quickly. This is a quick little story. I can talk it to you, but I want you to see it. Bless you, Lord. Amen. Amen. We'll start at verse twenty-four. Mm -hmm. Stay here, patient, so I'll be patient. We're going to narrate our life correctly from, from this moment on. Amen. Okay? You ready? Amen. Yes. Amen. And when they were come to Capernaum, they that received tribute money came to Peter and said, Does not your master pay tribute? He said, Yes. And when he was come into the house, Jesus prevented him, saying, What thinkest thou, Simon? Now, now, now I want to stop right there. I want, I want to stop right there for a moment. What thinkest thou, Simon? Does he see? I've, I've preached it myself this way. What I'm about to tell you, mm -hmm. I've heard it preached this way. The, I, I've preached it where that you know Jesus asked Simon a question and Simon responds. That is not what happens. Mm -hmm. Jesus asked Simon a question. What do you think? And then tell him what he's thinking. Mm -hmm. oh, yep. Oh Lord, yes. Lord Jesus. Yes. How many times has God come to you? And maybe you didn't know it was God. Mm -hmm. And you're pondering about your bills. 
your taxes, your, your troubles, your issues, how you're going to do this, how you're going to come out with that. And, and the Holy Spirit meets you. What's he thinking? And tells you what you think. Mm -hmm. And you sit there, instead of having a true conversation with him, mm -hmm. so you can get a knowledge mm -hmm. of how to fix mm -hmm. what obviously you can't fix. <laughs> this is what most of us do. Father God, I pray this to you right now in the name of Jesus God. And God, well, I'm not saying don't do that. But if you're thinking, and it's on your mind, maybe he wants to just have a conversation with you about it and give you some knowledge of how to fix it. Mm -hmm. See, I'm not going to mess everything up that we know I have been taught about church. Because yeah. the reason why a lot of us not get results is because we think the moment the problem or something arises, the first thing we should do is just holler out in, in, in a prayer. Right. Or going and go into a tunnel. Yeah. Yeah. Or praise God and, 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 and nothing's happening. You're trying right. to figure out. Well, right. why doesn't it happen? Because yeah. God already knows the answer and he don't need to shout that he'll try to tell him what they're gonna do. Okay. Amen. Amen. I'm guilty of Amen. Yes. Yeah. Side note though. The devil ain't the one that led you into this wilderness place in your mind right now. Amen. He's not the one that has led you to this place where all the bills and everything is coming against you right now. Maybe, just maybe, just maybe, based off the of scripture, just maybe. Because I've I, I been really looking in scripture to find out who, who leads us to the wilderness. Mm -hmm. I got one place, but I, but I also got other places in the Old Testament because the Bible said that, that he was going to take them out in the wilderness and have a party. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe, just maybe, mm -hmm. I'm in my wilderness place not to mope and cry, mm -hmm. but to learn how to party, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Because my wilderness place is designed to bring you to a place of freedom. Amen. Oh, you don't, you, you're not hearing me. You're not hearing me. They were in captivity for so long in, the, in, in, in Egypt. After they got free, he took them to the wilderness. Jesus, as soon as the Holy Spirit falls upon him when he comes out of Jordan, the Spirit takes him to the wilderness. Maybe the party or the feast he's talking about is the type of feast that we got in our mind when we hear the word feast. He's saying he, it was a eleven days journey, but he was going to take him into the wilderness to make a feast for him for three days. Make a feast, have a celebration. Just what? That, what he's telling us that look, your learned experiences about him supposed to be fun, baby, okay. and exciting. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I remember when I started learning how to receive revelation from the Holy Spirit. All before, when I would read the Bible, I was doing it for hell. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Couldn't mm -hmm. read it too many. Yep, yep. yep. Mm -hmm. I closed the book. Mm -hmm. I'm going to sleep with him with you. Mm -hmm. yep. And with, with dread, the moments of having to go study. Mm -hmm. yep. But then all of a sudden, mm -hmm. I found you some, some scripture mm -hmm. that said the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. not an it, but a he, mm -hmm. when he come, he going to teach me all things mm -hmm. and bring all things to my remembrance, whatever things he said to me. Yeah. And so one day, after, after sitting down and saying, oh, Holy Spirit, I, I just want to get to know you. I want you to teach me and give me an understanding of your word. Show me what, what it is you're saying to me. The Holy Spirit, the Jesus said, I know a lot of you, but I'm Jesus said, if I hunger and thirst after righteousness, 
I will be filled. Yes. Yes. I will yes. be filled. Yes. So the Holy Spirit, I want righteousness. I said, I don't even know what that is. Mm -hmm. But I want it. Yes. Mm -hmm. I want to be taught by you. Yes. Amen. I kid you not. Pick my Bible up. Next time, same thing happened. It's one particular day, I, 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 was, I was studying. You know? and all of a sudden, I hear, something, I hear a voice, and I call it something that time, turn over here. Mm -hmm. I just turn. Mm -hmm. Boom. And I'm reading something, and all of a sudden, I get a true understanding of what's being said. So now, I'm excited because I finally got an understanding of something out of all these years. I never had an understanding of nothing, but finally I'm getting it. So then now, I'm out talking with nobody with me. No Bible. And I'm talking, and, and, and where I will say, um, oh, I, I gotta find that. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit was, was, was like he whispering in my ear, just talking to me. And I said, whoa. Mm -hmm. I started getting excited. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that same excitement came just like when my, when, when my father was teaching me how to fish. Mm -hmm. I would get excited about it. Mm -hmm. He brought me down teach me how to fish. When my father taught me how to drive a nail properly, I got excited because my daddy mm -hmm. was teaching me how to drive a nail. Mm -hmm. That excitement came mm -hmm. because of the knowledge and understanding from something that I first didn't know how to do, now I was able to do it. Mm -hmm. So now Peter here, in the scripture, and I don't think we've read it yet, because I've got ahead of myself. Mm -hmm. Did we read it yet? Mm -hmm. No. No. You I stopped at 25. 25 says, he says, okay, what thing is thou, Simon? Of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute? Of their own children or of strangers? Mm -hmm. Peter said unto him, of strangers. Jesus said unto him, did all the children free? Not was there least should of should least we should offend them. Go thou to the sea and cast in cast the hook and take up the fish that first cometh up. And when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money that take and give unto them for me and thee. Now let me show you some how I know that this was a thing that was going to be defined. Because you read the scripture, it really don't tell you that Peter was worried about this thing. Right. But because I, I, I have the understanding to know Bible from my, my studying, I know that Peter was a fisherman. Mm -hmm. Not because he liked the fish, that was his business. Mm -hmm. So Peter, in his mind, he was struggling with, how to pay these taxes from this business? How to do this? I'm out here ministering with the gospel and carrying with him, and I got no taxes don't stop. So he's wondering and trying to figure out how am I going to do this thing? And Jesus says, um, um, Peter, what you worry about that for? Mm -hmm. What you mean what I worry about this for? You, you worry about how you're going to pay these taxes. How do you do that? How do you do how you Peter, don't worry about how I do. Just know that I know. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to fix this for a moment. Simple instruction. Go down to the sea. I'm gonna give you permission to go fishing today. But I'm, but but you take the first fish up, come take the money out of his mouth, go pay yours and mine and get them back here. Most folk can't, can't take that instruction. Most see, see that, that's why I be praying, Lord, don't call me away from contracting just yet. No, because I love it. I love what I do. I really do. But I know if I hear him say, so put that down, me and him have to talk. <laughs> okay, see, I, see, I can be real with it. I can be real with it. I'm, I'm going to be real with it. And he knows that about me. We would have to talk about God the whole now. I don't know. I really don't want to do it, do it, do it that much. Now, come on now. I like, you know, I do it, but I don't want to do it that much. This conversation I had with him. Amen. But I can be real with him. So a lot of us find ourselves trying to accomplish and get things done, and we don't have a clue what's our first step. No, that's the next step. Amen. And you won't be real with yourself. And God has, 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 has provided answers and solutions and ways and remedies and ways out of things and situations, but we won't even take the time or opportunity to talk to him. 
so he can show us how to come out of a situation or how to get it fixed or how or how to rectify this thing. He was he has every answer for us. Amen. Yes, he does. Amen. But we won't we won't even we won't even we won't even we won't go spend time with him find out. So we, we walk around our lives with all this stuff on our on our mind about how we're gonna do this, how we're gonna do that, how we're gonna take care of this, what we when we're gonna get the money for this, how we're gonna do this right here. Did you ask the one who put the thought on your mind? Amen. Did you ever ask the one who put the thought there in the first place or gave you the vision? Did you talk to him about it? Now I'm gonna help these, I'm gonna help these Bible thumpers in here for a moment. Mm -hmm. That know Bible, mm -hmm. that they've been baptized, been saved, mm -hmm. sanctified, mm -hmm. and sealed in the Holy Ghost. I'm gonna, I'm gonna help you for a moment. Because mm -hmm. I had to get help at this myself. Yep. I'm gonna help you for a moment. Yeah. Yeah. Because somewhere down the line, mm -hmm. you did the right thing mm -hmm. the wrong way. Amen. Someone down the line, preacher, mm -hmm. prophet, mm -hmm. pastor, mm -hmm. apostle, mm -hmm. teacher, mm -hmm. evangelist, yes. they'll leave it right out. Mm -hmm. You did the right thing the wrong way, and now you're stuck and been stuck for a long time, mm -hmm. and you won't move in faith. In fact, you, you did it for so long ago. So you don't know the last time you had a true conversation with God. Mm. Mm. David grew up being sheltered, kept, protected, raised up, armed, solidified by God the Father. Mm -hmm. Covered by the Holy Spirit. In constant fellowship with the Son through his word. King David. He knew who God was. God called him a man of his own heart. But here lies the problem. Here lies the problem. One day, Mr. Know-it-all, who knew his regimen of how he studies and how he prays and how he sings and worships and all that, he knew it all too well. So over in the book of, of, of 1 Samuel, right about the 6th chapter, no, 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 I said that wrong. Hold on, hold on. You right, right. Second Samuel the sixth chapter, verses twelve through twenty-three. Also, verse one through eleven. So basically, this chapter, Second Samuel chapter six, verse one through twenty-three. And I also want you to write down First Chronicles thirteen, the entire chapter. And then we'll pick back up at First Chronicles fifteen and thirteen. I'm gonna keep talking to you. This is the way he just shifted me and said, "Son, this is where the majority of you all are at right now." You're mad with me. You're upset with me. Because you don't believe I'm going to do what I said I'm going to do. Or you even been to the point where you said, you know what? The last time I tried that, mm -hmm. it didn't go too well. Come on. And so because I did that, mm -hmm. I'm not going to do it again. Mm. And so a lot of us have, have picked up the right thing, but we picked it up the wrong way. And that's what, that's what Mr. Know what I was today did. He knew the glory of God. He knew what it looked like, but he also knew what it felt like. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you a question tonight. Honestly, 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 honestly. How many of you remember when the glory of God really fell upon you the first time? How many of you remember that? First cast day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You remember that, don't you? Yes. The glory of God. The overwhelming, overshadowing power of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Fell on you. Mm -hmm. Cloven tongues of fire. Mm -hmm. Overwhelming joy. You couldn't shake it. You couldn't quit it. There mm -hmm. you, you, wasn't nothing you could do. You just, you just knew mm -hmm. what the glory of God was in that moment, didn't you? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, we can be true for a moment. When the last time you really honestly 
experienced and felt that. Mm -hmm. you know, don't, don't, don't show me. Mm -hmm. Just just, 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 just give me a hold mm -hmm. within yourself. Because the Lord is wanting to check us tonight. Mm -hmm. So we can quit faking the funk. Mm -hmm. No, no. It, it's time to quit faking the funk. Because you really understand. The devils know who he is. And they tremble. Now catch this part. Why they ain't trembling at you? Oh God. If you carry him and they know him and tremble, why aren't they trembling at you? Mm -hmm. Let that sink in for a moment. The devils believe and they tremble. That's what the word says. Yes. That's the word. Because they know him. That's right. Why are they not trembling at you when you when you walk up, walk on the scene? Why your, your issues and things that you're dealing with don't just bow at the knee of the Jesus you say you carry? Last I checked, the word doesn't change. No. The word has not lost its power. The Bible teaches us that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. So what is your situation? Go take a knee and confess that Jesus is Lord in you. Oh, God. Oh, God, I'm already preaching. I'm teaching. Yes. But yes, God, it's okay. It's, it's okay. Amen. It's okay. Because we're going to get some understanding tonight. Yes. Because yes. I'm, I'm done with just, just showing forth great energy, right. passion, and enthusiasm, right. but I don't have any knowledge. Yes. Right. And then the book of Hosea tells me in, in the fourth chapter that, 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 that people perish. For the lack of it. Simple mm -hmm. means to just wither away, be completely done away with, perish. Mm -hmm. Because you like knowledge. Mm -hmm. So David decides to go after something that he knew was once not just on him, but among him. And somewhat on him, but yet it's a sad thing when the glory of God is on you or in you, and yet you choose not to even consider his way, how he wants to do it. God, what's your plan for this? I have a thought in my mind about what I think would be a good thing, the right thing to do. Right. But what are you saying concerning this? Because when we make this make decisions like this, yes. without consulting God, yes. somewhere in the process, someone or something dies. Yeah. That's right. yeah. And when this took place, because David chose not to consider God's plan or God's way or God's will on how to do this thing, right. it caused David to say, you know what? I know your glory, I know your power, I don't want it. Mm -hmm. I know what it can do. Mm -hmm. it, I, know, I, don't, I, I, didn't, I didn't have it on me. Mm -hmm. I want it over here though. Mm -hmm. And he left it. He took it somewhere and left it somewhere for a while. All because he got offended by what it did in his life. I don't know who I'm talking to. Talk to I don't know where, 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 where it was at in your life. Right. Where you got all in yourself. Mm -hmm. And you tried to let your ox decision mm -hmm. carry God's glory. Oh, mm -hmm. God. But God says tonight, mm -hmm. if you were here to have a real conversation, mm -hmm. he'll teach you how to go back and get his glory. So you quit showing for all the zeal yes. with no knowledge. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. With no knowledge. Right. I'm going to show y'all what zeal looks like. I'm, I'm, I'm going to embarrass myself for a moment just to do that. I, I don't care what zeal looks like. Mm -hmm. But with no knowledge. Mm -hmm. we, we mistakenly take faith the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Because we, Abraham went to a place 
to look for a city mm -hmm. whose builder and maker was God. Mm -hmm. The Bible says this about Abraham. He said, he, and he went not what? Not knowing. Yeah. So, okay, God, hold on now. <laughs> Abraham didn't have no knowledge right. of where he was going. Right. But yet he still went. Yes, he did. And because he went, not knowing, trusting you, right. he, he was called the father of faith. Yes. He went to a city, and obviously, yeah, he found the city, but yet he, he still by his faith, God, he didn't know. But, but he went anyway. Right. So, God, how can you tell us tonight that, that we perish because we have a lack of knowledge? How can you tell us tonight, God, that we have zeal, enthusiasm, passion, a lot of energy, but not according to knowledge. Do we really need it? Abraham went not knowing. He had no knowledge where he was going, but he made it. Right? And the Lord said, don't be stupid. Don't be stupid. The one thing that, that Abraham had that most believers also have but won't trust is my voice. His voice. Abraham had the leading and the guiding of the voice of God. And most of us today, as Christians, don't have a clue what the voice of God looks like, sounds like, or be like. But we won't, we will not tell the truth that we don't. But whether you want to tell the truth or not, nope. let pressure hit you. Pressure tell me that you don't know God's voice in your life. Yeah. Like he, I hear you many times. I don't know what God's saying to me. I don't, I don't know what he's saying. I don't know what he wants me to do. I don't know. I don't know. You don't know his voice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He, 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 he has strange ways of teaching me how to hear his voice. Yeah. So guess what? It shouldn't have to be that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Boy, cry up here. Yeah, boy, but it's right. Right. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us, I'm not going to keep it the time, tells us that the reason why this man died because David did not choose to consider God's way. He didn't even ask God how he should do what, he, what God told him, what he really felt his heart to do. And I look at what promise is right here. When you go over in the book of 2 Samuel and read it, it doesn't give you much detail. It gives you a lot of a story, mm -hmm. but, but in, the, in Chronicles, it gives you detail. Chronicles says this about it. Chronicles tells the story of how they would arrive to, 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 the, to, the, to, the, um, to the, the, the mindset of actually going forward and doing this thing. Mm -hmm. Chronicles tells us that David had a thought of what he wanted to do for God. He was bring God's glory back. Then the, here comes the problem. David goes in merely to the people and asks them, what do you think about this? Yeah. 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 And all the people said, sounds good to me. Yeah. Jesus. Amen. You got folk 
in trouble and, 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 and rent due and foreclosures coming and all this stuff happening, evicting them, and you ain't sat one time and said, God, hold up. Mm -hmm. yes. Am I not your son? Yes. Yes. Don't you put in your word that a father yes. who don't take care of his own is worth an infinite or that is that you not? Yep. But you don't even talk to him like that. Right. When you don't know somebody, Lord, you ratchet, but I love you. <laughs> you don't know how to approach him. Amen. I tell tell my father this right here. When I was in DC, my entire family, because he told me he, he, I would get, I made a commitment to get up every morning at four o'clock and have worship time with him. Amen. And and and, and, and praise time and, and, and study time. And I'll get up faithfully because because I'm going I, I gotta see your face. Mm -hmm. And I'm just I want to worship. And I'll be praying in the spirit. Everybody in the house sleeps so I so the Holy Spirit was told me, telling me how to do it. Be quiet. Mm -hmm. Just talk to me like this. And I was doing it. And one morning, just like clockwork, I'm going through the motions, and I lift my hands when the Spirit says to me, I'm going to show you. I'm going to take you to a man. They're going to teach you how to become the man I always told you to be. I heard it. I said, okay, God, here we go. So I started following the guy. He's taking his leader. So we're getting decent. Things are going good for a while. Go good. Company's growing. Things coming together. I'm 27 at the time. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm holding on to God. That's all I know. We, 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 we get behind. And I call myself Kitty on my knees. Father, name of Jesus. I'm, and all I can see was my daddy, James Taylor, mm. me coming to him and asking him for some money. And he reached in his wallet and giving it to me. Then I saw him telling me in a conversation, in the same prayer, I'll see about it. Mm -hmm. I'm riding down the road the next day, and I see, my, I see me talking again to my father, and he says to me this time, I'm thinking about it. Mm -hmm. I'll let you know. Mm -hmm. So I picked the phone up, calling his number. Call can't go through. I said, hold up. God, maybe you're trying to talk to me about something I'm not understanding here. So I, I said, God, now, excuse me for where I'm about to talk to you now, but uh, you and I both know. If I get on this phone right now, he's going to help me. Mm -hmm. I'm his son. We both know that. We're not in the, the knuckle up and, 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 and got at each other or not. But that's one thing I'm about. That man, my, my daddy, if I call him, yeah, right, yeah. he's going to see about me. Right. He better than you. <laughs> see, 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 see. Yeah, I just lost the church. Nope. I turned to him. He better than you? Yeah. I'm a grown man now. Mm -hmm. Is he better than you? Mm -hmm. Help me, Lord. Help me. Show me what I'm doing wrong right here. Show me where I'm at. I'm paying my time. I'm, paying, I'm faithful at it. What am I doing wrong? He said, did you ask me where to go look for the next job at? Oh. No, no. It was just that simple. Oh, Jesus. It was, it was just that simple. I did not have the knowledge to even consider, God, where's the next job at? No, I'm just getting up every morning because that's what I did. I, I'm not lazy. I, I, I love the work. So I, I'm, I don't care if I have it or not. I got up every morning. I put it on. Looking. Couldn't find no work. I'm like, yes. something's wrong with this picture. He said, like, son, if you just ask me, yes. where is that? Yes. I'll lead you to it. Yes. I don't know who I'm preaching to. Me. Oh. <laughs> but have to consider just going back to him and asking and asking the Lord, where did I go wrong? What yes. option I made carry your glory? Hmm. What else? One ox I took your, your glory and put on his back. Where well, I made a mistake here. Yes. Promise you he'll tell you. Yes, he will. He'll show me. Yes. But one thing about God is not like man. Yes. Man has 
had the ability to tell you when you were wrong and with no, yes. no, no offer, no help. That's right. That's right. Talk about it. Yes. Drag you through the mud. Yes. But God said, yes. oh, son, this is what you did. Now, now come, come. Yep, yep. come on. Come, come on. on. Come on. This is what you did. Let's go. You want, you want, you want to get it right now? Yep. Let's go. Come on. Come on, God. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. What does God is he saying? Yes, he does. And all he wants to do yes. is for us to understand that he wants to help us with yes. our infirmities. Yes. 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 In the book of Romans, the yes. chapter 26 to about, to about 29, it tells us in the Holy Spirit, oh, he, he just came out one thing. Mm -hmm. Praying for you, mm -hmm. helping you with your infirmity, but you're going to do it not according to your self desires and your will. Right. He's going to pray according to the yeah. will of the Father. Yeah. That's right. Why? Because the Father has already set the lines in your body. Right. Yes. He knows you, he knows where you're supposed to be at all yes. your day. Yes. He already yes. knows that. Yes, he does. So why are you gonna sit here and, and because you want it now and you gotta have it over here and God said, Man, yeah, okay, okay, you got revelation and, and I'm gonna give you that yet, yeah, but not now. That's right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We'll give it to you. Amen. But we didn't cross this boundary yet. Amen. Oh. I haven't even yet taught you. Why take best pray when you pray? Come on. Learn how to really get the understanding and knowledge of how to pray the prayer properly so I can't increase any large. Yes. Amen. Yes. For praying, J Bear's prayer lady, and they had nothing increasing, nothing large, and you started just going through the prayer. And nothing happened because you didn't yes. take the time to realize that, hold on. The man came to a place in his life where he had to understand that, hold up. Mm -hmm. I didn't name myself this. Yes. My mama had a problem. Mm -hmm. She didn't want to talk because she bore me in pain. Mm -hmm. She gonna call me J B. Yes. <laughs> She's a liar. <laughs> but, <laughs> bore me in pain. Lord Jesus. So that's why I'm from the Lord. Amen. Because she named me this for him. Mm, child. Oh. Mm. Okay, God, you know what? Mm. Up to this point, I didn't know that. Mm. And I'll cause pain every way I went because I didn't know that. Okay. But now that I know it, God, Amen. I don't want to cause nobody else no pain. Amen. Sweet, that's what he says. Yes, he does. He said, but I need you to enlarge and increase my coast and my territory so I won't cause nobody else no pain. Right. You know, I'm too cramped up, boy. Right. Yes. Mm. Increase me. Enlarge. J.B. is not doing it. Greater responsibility because, because to, to, to him that know that don't do it, you know, you know he's going to give people many strong. Right. Him that, that, that don't even know how to do it and do it, God, he's going to give you a few. But to, to, to greater than he, oh, God, what's the spirit of the Holy Spirit is the greater responsibility. Mm -hmm. What's required? He give you more? What is required? What is required? Amen. Amen. If I enlarge this thing, J.B., Amen. What is required? Don't come to me talking about, uh-uh. Are you ready for the responsibility? Yes. See, these are the things I had to come to an understanding and knowledge of. I'm not going to just go pray, God, give me this right here, and I ain't prepared to pay no taxes. I ain't prepared to pay no payroll. Yes, no, no, yes, no. Yes. Hold Come up, on, God. Man. Amen. Amen. God will bring to us what he has for us. Mm -hmm. In closing, y'all stand with me closing. Holy Spirit just flashed up before my face today that he told me to do. I wasn't going to do it. He told me, he said, do that. Mm -hmm. I said, God, that makes no sense. Mm -hmm. He told me to do it. So. Mm -hmm. I was in Walmart, Walmart World today. Mm -hmm. And it might have been there already. I don't know. I don't know. But I looked up and I saw this big old egg that said, Happy Easter. Mm -hmm. I said, man, we we, we just said Happy Valentine's Day. Amen. Amen. <laughs> he said, yeah, I know you did. Happy Easter. 
Now the Holy Spirit, what are you trying to tell me? He said, son, they don't wait to announce a new season. That's right. Why y'all wait to announce a new season? Oh, they about to start making revenue yeah. off of Easter yeah. and they ain't even here yet. That's right. Uh -huh. The reason why you ain't getting yeah. you just so far behind because yeah. you take it too long so to announce the next season. Yeah.
because we don't have a true understanding of why, why we tithe. We don't have an understanding of it. We never succeed multiply because we don't have a true understanding of what makes seed multiply. Mm -hmm. More seed. Amen. More seed. Amen. 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 So Father, I pray even now for the blessing, Lord God, that's going to come um, to your people, Lord God, because of them giving, Lord God. Lord God, I thank you for the humbleness and the grace, Lord God, that you were even allowed to rest on every generous heart right now, God. That will cause their eyes to be open, Lord God, their spiritual eyes, Lord God, that they can begin to see what, Lord God, their donation or what their time, Lord God, can release into their life, God, because of their heart set moment, God, of giving into your kingdom. Father God, I pray in the Holy Spirit that you begin to speak to each one of them and show them, Lord God, the benefit of giving to your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. 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 I pray that the word of God went forth tonight with power and demonstration and understanding for most of anything. And that what the Holy Spirit has said here tonight has brought forth an understanding of deliverance to the hearts, the minds of his people. Um, there are a lot of infirmities that we deal with. An infirmity is simply a sickness. And a lot of us don't want to acknowledge that we have infirmities. Yeah. And all these infirmities are not things that will cause you to sit in a hospital bed. That's right. But it's right. things that will cause you life to look sickly. Yes. Amen. 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 And so Amen. the Lord is here to help us yeah. get beyond a sickly lifestyle. Yes. Yes. And so those that are watching, if you guys have a little time, I want to pray real yeah. quick. Yeah. I want to pray. And I'm not gonna, I want to pray real quick because I don't need a lot of words to say this prayer. Amen. I want to release the infirmities off of your life tonight. I want to give you, through the power of the Holy Spirit, the grace of God, the ability to relinquish your sicknesses, your infirmities. And this is what I want you to do. I want you to repeat after me. Say, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Diagnose me. Diagnose me. Right now. Right now. Show me. Show me. Tell me. Tell me. Where I'm sick at. Where I'm sick at. I relinquish. I relinquish. All. All. And every. And every. Sickness. Sickness. Infirmity. Infirmity. In my life. In my life. Now. Now. I do so. I do so. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For healing my life. For healing my life. God bless you.